Welcome to this Education and Philosophy podcast, part of a series introducing key ideas in education and philosophy. The ideas covered in this series are discussed in relation to their potential use to present-day thought and practice. This series draws from the book Education and Philosophy, published by SAGE, to which there is a link below. In this podcast, I will briefly discuss Aristotelian praxis. Praxis can be defined as a form of practical reasoning or tacit wisdom that can only be learned through experience. It has been argued that teaching is basically a praxis-based endeavour. The idea of praxis is traced back to the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle. There are many different understandings of praxis and how it relates to other key terms in Aristotle's philosophy. I will describe how it has been used to shed light on and contest how we conceptualise education in modernity. As an idea, praxis has proved popular amongst critical educators because it revives a conception of education that is designed to resist all forms of outside intervention or political meddling. Praxis is an idea that is used to stand up for education. Not only is outside interference problematic because it places external demands on teachers because it imposes frameworks on them that they are often not free to debate. From a praxis-based perspective, the very attempt to dictate what good teaching looks like from the outside demonstrates a complete misunderstanding of the nature of teaching. Praxis appears within and is developed by way of the day-to-day experiences of those working in education. As such, praxis cannot be predefined, decided externally, or set down in writing. It does not involve a set of technical skills that can be taught or followed because techniques of that sort are usually designed with pre-given ends in mind. By contrast, praxis involves a constant renegotiation of ends as well as means. According to a praxis-based perspective, teaching should involve, facilitate and encourage ongoing reflection on its own character and consequences. In this way, it produces a different kind of knowledge about education. Praxis does not implement abstract knowledge of, say, what good teaching looks like or of what techniques work best in the classroom. Nor does it produce that kind of knowledge. Rather, praxis-based knowledge is situated, contingent and constantly changing. It's produced in an educational context and must always remain in that context. Praxis has noble ambitions. It is defined via Aristotle as aiming to realise what is known as the good life, where the good life is a somewhat odd expression used by some philosophers. It's basically their shorthand for what they consider to be a morally worthwhile form of human life. The nature of the good life is not easily explained, from a praxis-based perspective. According to this way of thinking, we do not know, we cannot know, abstractly, what the good life is like, or how we must achieve it. According to Aristotle, we can only realise the good life through our attempts to live it, through our attempts to discover and realise it. And it's here that education performs a vital function. As a praxis-based endeavour, Education is, apparently, very well suited to help us to work towards the good life. It will help us to figure out what that life is, what it looks like, and how best to achieve it through practice. Clearly, this way of thinking about education makes the school's inspectorate, or other agencies measuring and quantifying the goodness of education, entirely redundant. Thinking of education as praxis completely undermines modern understandings of teaching and its evaluation, which are based on a model that imposes external ideas or frameworks and closes down space for educational deliberation. Some of those arguing for a praxis-based understanding of education do so because they claim we've become blinded in modernity to the moral value inherent in practice. In an age of measurement, we have no idea what good teaching practice is, in the fuller Aristotelian sense. According to a praxis-based approach, 
This reliance on external authority has to be given up. And here I'm not just talking about those in leadership positions or positions of power, but all external authorities, including everything that an education department in a contemporary university produces by way of research. A heavy responsibility is placed, instead, on the educator who is only ever answerable to him or herself, or, more broadly, is only answerable to his or her immediate community in terms of how he or she is acting in any particular moment in that setting. But this presents its own difficulties. Whilst thinking of education and teaching as a form of practical wisdom, is useful in helping teachers resist, at least at the level of thought, what is often called instrumental rationality or managerialism, we should approach this way of thinking about education with care. For praxis to make sense, we have to assume, first of all, that educators have the capacity to realise a morally worthwhile form of human life. Thinking of education as praxis assumes that educators can discover the good that is internal to their practice and put it to use. Or, to put this slightly differently, it assumes, well actually it insists, that there must be some good inherent to education that the educator or educational community will discover if they try hard enough. These ideas are discussed in more detail in Chapter 3 of Education and Philosophy. If you would like to hear another podcast discussing a key idea related to education and philosophy, click below. Thank you for listening.